Welcome to the Toilet Talk with Terry 21, episode two. Question number two out of 21 questions. The question that we are answering on this episode is, what is something in 40 years we will all be nostalgic for? What is something, something, you name it, that we will all be nostalgic for 40 years from now? Really cheesy Liberty Mutual commercial jingle. And again, we may even be embarrassed by it. It won't take 40 years, but about five years from now in 2025 or 2026, we'll be hanging those COVID little mini COVID masks on the tree. We'll be like, oh yeah, we know what year that was from. 2020. Mm -hmm. And then there's the historic events that apply to everybody, especially people who were around back then. I was too young to remember this one because I was one years old. And it was about 20 years ago, 9-11, when the Twin Towers got hit by the planes. I mean, the way that the historical event impacts you depends on where you were during the event. I'll tell you, my granddaddy was delivering Meals on Wheels for his, uh, Kiwanis Club. Where were you? I belong to a Kiwanis Club here in my hometown of Smyrna, Georgia. I've been a member for over 20 years. I really enjoy my time in Kiwanis and visiting with my friends. We meet every Tuesday morning and we always uh, enjoy the friendship and the camaraderie. We get there early so we can drink coffee and catch up on events in our lives, talk about what's going on in the community. We also have volunteer opportunities. We have things we can do that help our community and I love doing that. One of the events and things that we sponsored and have for many years is Meals on Wheels. We deliver meals to shut-ins and invalids and people that just need help, people that may be poor and need to be fed at least one good meal a day, and we deliver those. So on this particular day, it was Tuesday, September the 11th, 2001, and it was my turn to deliver Meals on Wheels in Smyrna. The recipients of the meals are always glad to see us, and we try to stay with each family, each person, as long as we can, but still make our rounds in about two hours so that everybody gets a meal. But it seems to brighten the recipients' days and we enjoy visiting with them. Now, Kiwanis is a volunteer group and they always insist that two people go on these Meals on Wheels visits. It's for safety, number one, and because one person can drive and the other one can navigate. And we usually have 10, 12, sometimes as many as 15 people that we're trying to get to. And so it's always good to operate in pairs. My partner on this day, again, September the 11th, 2001, my partner was a retired Army Colonel named Walter McElwain. Now you need to know a little bit about Walt. He was a favorite of mine. Walt has since passed away and I miss him very much, but he was an old, crusty Army veteran. He was in the Army for more than 30 years. He stormed the beaches of Normandy. He fought in the Korean War in Vietnam. His helicopter was shot down in Vietnam. He didn't like to talk much about his service. Many people from that era just, just don't do it. But Walt was typical of his generation. He was a tough old nut, had a gruff voice and a demeanor to match. On Tuesday, our habit is to meet at a particular place, enjoy some coffee and visit with our friends before we leave to go and collect the meals and get the maps and the list of people that we're gonna visit that day for Meals on Wheels. So we arrive a little bit earlier than normal and Walt and I gathered our stuff up, had our coffee and said our goodbyes. It was about nine o'clock, maybe a few minutes before. So we left, said our goodbyes, got our address list and our meals together and we headed off. We did not turn on the radio. We enjoyed visiting so Everybody at Kiwanis had been talking about the plane that had hit one of the towers in New York City. We all thought it was an accident, 
but we thought it was an accident, so we didn't even bother listening to the radio as we headed toward our first visit. We pulled into the driveway of this first house. Walt got the meal stuff together, and I grabbed the, the name of the person and special instructions, and we knocked on the front door. Nobody came. We knocked again even louder, and I called out the man's name. Nothing happened. Our instructions are to go to another door if this ever occurs, and so we went around to a side door, knocked again even louder, called out, meals on wheels, nobody came to the door. So I looked at Walt, he said, try the door. So I tried the door handle, and it opened right up, right into the kitchen. Now we don't go in with, unless we're invited, so I stuck my head in and I shouted real loud, meals on wheels, are you home? And we heard this faint voice in the back of the house. He said, come on in boys, I'm in the back. So we entered the house. There in the back room in this little house, dimly lit room, was this small man sitting in an overstuffed chair with a TV right in front of him, about three feet from his face, and he was staring at the screen. By now, it was a few minutes after nine o'clock. He turned around, he looked at me, he looked at Colonel Walt McElwain. The man said, pull up a chair, boys. History is being made today. America is under attack. I froze. I was dumbfounded. I looked at that TV. I looked at Walt. He straightened up, straight as an arrow. Walt said, we have meals to deliver and we have to go home and be with our families and we have to go now. This was an order from the Colonel. This was not a request. And I knew we had to leave and so we left quickly. We finished our deliveries as quickly as we could and every place we went, people wanted to talk about what was going on in New York City, but we just couldn't. So we left and we drove in silence. I arrived back home and I learned that a second plane had hit the tower at 9.03. That's about the time we were leaving Kiwanis to start our route. At 9.37, a plane hit the Pentagon just as we were loading meals into the car. We didn't know that. At 10.03, Flight 96 crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Everyone died. And that's just about the time we were making our first delivery to that house. At 10.28, the first tower fell, followed very shortly by the second tower, and 3,000 Americans died instantly. Like most Americans, my wife and I spent the next several days glued to the television set. A few days later, President George Bush toured the crash site in New York. As the crowd cheered, he said, I can hear you, the rest of the world can hear you. And the people that knocked down these towers will hear from all of us soon. I never heard Colonel Walter McElwain speak of that day again. He treated it like he treated any other combat experience. But I was glad I was with him on that terrible day. He was calm, he was anxious, but he was in charge. He was my friend and I miss him very much. And I'll never forget where I was on that day. Where were you? I don't really keep up that much with politics these days. <laughs> and I didn't back then when that happened either, obviously. But on to the point, it depends on where you were. Because you could have people 40 years from now saying, oh yeah, I was right there in the White House or wherever it was. Well, actually, no, we're not going to have anybody saying that. Or at least, I don't think so. Because think about it. The people who are in the White House now, they all got gray hair. They'll probably be dead 40 years from now. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? 40 years from now, given that I'm in my 20s, I'll be in like what? My 60s? Yes. 60s. And God willing, I have grandkids. I mean, though, you got to know. You got to know this. They're probably going to be asking my, my wife, their grandmother, if I marry, questions like, who was Michael Jackson? Because you know he's, people are still going to be talking about him 40 years from now. And she'll answer them, oh, he was the love of my life. And they'll be like, what? You thought Grandpa Toilet was the love of your life. <laughs> That's another thing too, right there. Kids might not even call their grandparents grandma and grandpa 40 years from now. Think about it. 
the whole world is going wackadoodle and it's going to get even more and more and more and more and more and more whack until one day Jesus comes back. If he hasn't come back 40 years from now, this world will have gone so whack. Get this. Instead of calling their grandparents grandma and grandpa or papa and nana or grandma and grandpa or what you name it i'll bet every parent about 40 years from now you know three or four decades from now is going to be like man don't you just miss the old days where grandparents were called normal and more respectful names like grandma and grandpa i kind of don't like the potty mouth names like oopsie or who knows Maybe by then, kids will even be calling parents by their first names, and maybe even grandparents by their first names, too. And let me say, for the record, I could not imagine having to call my parents Gina and Chris, or my grandparents Susie and Mike, or Brendia, or Della and Jerry, or Kelly, or anything like that. I could not imagine my grandkids coming over one day about... 40, 50 years from now and saying something like, hey, you want to go hovercrafting with us, Toilet and Tammy? <laughs> that right there is another thing. Maybe four decades from now, or five decades from now even, or maybe even three, kids may use hovercrafts to get everywhere, even inside the houses, even in their houses. I'm telling you. And I'll be telling them, my grandkids things like, you know, or maybe even my kids, who knows? if hovercrafts exist by then. When we were your age, we used our legs for getting everywhere. And we'd be like, yeah, whatever, poopsie. Whatever, toilet. What, however it ends up then. Let me say, if a guest arrives on a hovercraft at our house soon, that's gonna be a violent shove into the next generation. <laughs> Which leads me into our next topic. Join us for, on the next episode, question number three out of 21 for the Toilet Talk with Terry 21, which is, what is the weirdest thing a guest has done in your home? Okay, don't forget to click subscribe for more content. What's to come next will be great. You don't want to miss it. All right, take care. Peace, folks.